Public health measures such as school closures and social isolation have been used to reduce the spread of COVID-19. And there's a growing body of evidence that these pandemic-related stressors have led to a higher risk of mental illness and greater levels of distress among children and adolescents. Due to these measures, we've seen a large change in how we deliver physician-based mental health care, with a shift from in-person visits to those delivered virtually, either by telephone or video. The main aim of our research was to identify changes in child and adolescent use of outpatient mental health care services provided by physicians in the first full year of the COVID-19 pandemic compared to before the pandemic, and to determine how much mental health care was delivered virtually. To provide context within the health system, we also explored changes in mental health related emergency department visits and hospitalizations through the pandemic. This was a population-based study using health administrative and demographic databases that are linked and available at ICES. We focused on 2.5 million children and adolescents between the ages of 3 and 17 years living in Ontario, Canada. We determined the number of outpatient mental health visits to a family physician, pediatrician, or psychiatrist, and identified whether these visits were conducted in person or virtually. We also looked at the number of mental health-related hospitalizations and emergency department visits. We measured changes in the observed and expected rates of mental health care visits between the two time periods, that is, in the three years before the pandemic, compared to March 2020 to the end of February 2021. We identified overall changes in mental health care use, as well as changes based on age group, sex, and mental health conditions. In this study, We found that following an initial rapid decline in outpatient mental health visits in the first three months of the COVID period, there was a sustained increase in visits, 6 to 15% above expected levels from July 2020 to February 2021. In contrast, mental health emergency department visits were 12 to 20% lower than expected levels, while mental health-related hospitalizations remained relatively stable during the first year of the COVID-19 pandemic. For outpatient care, Virtual mental health care delivery, which was seldom used before the pandemic, increased to about 70% of all physician-delivered mental health care during the first year of the pandemic. Substance use disorders, mood and anxiety disorders, and psychosis were the most common conditions treated virtually. Importantly, we observed that adolescent females between the ages of 13 and 17 years had the largest increase in outpatient mental health visit rates during the COVID-19 period, at 17 to 31 percent above expected levels. These findings tell an important story. The COVID-19 pandemic most certainly affected children's mental health. There was a large and sustained increase in utilization of outpatient mental health services for children and adolescents in Ontario throughout most of the first year of the pandemic. Adolescent females were disproportionately affected There was also a large, rapid, and sustained shift from in-person to virtual mental health care delivery. An important limitation of this study is that we did not study outpatient mental health care services provided by psychologists, social workers, and other therapists who provide a substantial amount of mental health care, as these data are not available in existing data sets. Equally important are, are that we measured health system utilization rather than mental health service needs or levels of distress. So what does all this mean? There have been substantial increases in mental health care demands by children and adolescents in the COVID-19 pandemic. Further, there's been an enormous shift to virtual care delivery without evidence to support or refute the appropriateness of this mode of health care encounter at such a scale and across an entire population. Given the mental health system was already stretched before the pandemic, there is a greater need than ever to respond and build capacity for the increased demand in outpatient services. This includes building capacity for community mental health supports, including in school settings, funding for hospital and physician services, and planning for children's mental health agencies across the province. We also need greater evidence to guide healthcare providers on when it might be most appropriate to use virtual versus in-person care and a corresponding funding structure to support that guidance. Finally, while this study highlights the need for ongoing surveillance and performance measurement of the mental health care system to inform resource allocation and improve mental health outcomes for children and youth.